Two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center. We're certainly blindsided by 9-11, and the question is, are we gonna be blindsided by events that are coming? The eyes of the world are riveted on Israel and the Middle East, the epicenter of the extraordinary events that are shaking our world and shaping our future. Iran vows to wipe Israel off the map. Iraq threatens to disintegrate into a full-blown civil war. And in Sudan, a horrific genocide is underway. What does it mean? What is coming next? Joel Rosenberg is a New York Times best-selling author of novels like The Last Jihad and Dead Heat and of the nonfiction book Epicenter. Why the current rumblings in the Middle East will change your future. The story I'm going to tell you tonight is how I began writing these political thrillers and how each of the books have had sort of an eerie way of having fictional elements within them seem to come true. And this, what is, this is what's led to me writing a nonfiction book, Epicenter, why the current rumblings in the Middle East will change your future, to help explain a little bit why these thrillers have had this appearance of coming true, what have I been basing these novels upon, and based on this research, what could we surmise might be coming over the horizon. So I began writing a novel called The Last Days. And it was both about the last days of Yasser Arafat, as well as uh, these characters beginning to wonder if these wars and rumors of wars in the Middle East might be suggestive of what the Bible calls the last days. The first chapter, Arafat is killed. He dies in the first chapter. I know I'm giving that away, but I'm just, you have to understand that 13 months later, Arafat was dead. As the novel continues, my fictional American president is pushing for peace and democracy in the Middle East. Two months after Arafat dies, President Bush, for real, decides to make democracy the centerpiece, democracy in the Middle East, the centerpiece of his second term agenda. Stranger than all that was the fact that the first pages of the last days put you inside a U.S. diplomatic convoy driving into Gaza as part of the peace process when it's suddenly attacked by a massive explosion. Six days before the last days hit bookstores in October 2003, a U.S. diplomatic convoy driving into Gaza as part of the peace process was attacked by terrorists. This is what triggered U.S. News and World Report magazine to do a story on me describing me as a modern Nostradamus. So now I'm on hundreds of radio and TV shows saying, look, I'm not a psychic. I'm not a clairvoyant. I'm an evangelical Christian. I'm from an Orthodox Jewish heritage. I'm basing these novels on a series of geopolitical scenarios that I, and they'd say, what did you just say? I said, I'm basing these thrillers on a series of geopolitical scenarios that, and they said, no, 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 no. Before that, did you just say you're Jewish and you believe in Jesus? I said, yes. And I'm basing these novels on a series of geopolitical scenarios that... Russia is building a military alliance with Iran. And I went, hmm, that's interesting. Now, at this moment, fall of 2000, uh, I am thinking, my goodness, number one, uh, that's terrifying. What if Russian nuclear technology... And, and other military technology falls in the hands of the Iranians, the Iraqis. I mean, this is a nightmare scenario, just geopolitically. Second, I thought, this is actually pretty cool to be on this plane, sitting next to this guy, getting an insight into Bibi Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, and Vladimir Putin, the new leader of Russia. And then I thought, did you just say Russia and Iran? And I'm thinking, and I didn't want to bring it up then because I was... I, didn't, I thought, you know, I'm not going to inject Bible prophecy into this discussion. They'll throw me right off the plane. I mean, I don't know what he thinks about the Bible or anything. I, and I, but I went home after that, after that uh, media tour that I was taking him on. I went home and I began to <laughs> open up the scriptures again. I began to get out some of my research books and go, Russia and Iran? I just got a little insight. The prime minister of Israel thinks this is a big deal. Maybe that's a novel I should write. The Bible describes having a personal relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. And I have to tell you, 
I would be remiss tonight if I, as I tell this story and what's happening in the Middle East and the, the lenses through which I'm looking at it, I would be remiss if I didn't say, I don't know when Jesus is coming back. What we call the rapture. I don't know when the war of Gog and Magog is happening, but I don't know what's going to happen to you when you drive out of this parking lot either. And neither do you. I don't know what's going to happen when you go to your doctor's appointment tomorrow or in the next couple of days, what news you're going to hear. I, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. The God of the universe says that he loves you. 